Greetings, family. This is Bomani Tamba, and welcome to our November Africa Tour Conference call for our upcoming Journey of a Lifetime to Egypt, South Africa, Kenya, Ghana, and Tanzania. And so, family, appreciate everyone joining us. Uh, we have lots of people on the call, so definitely appreciate everyone taking time out of their busy Sunday to join us. I always like to just set these conference calls this once a month to where we just go over the schedule and go over you know, all of the visual details. And it's only so much we can go over because we do have a nice schedule. We're closing out with Egypt this year and then starting with uh, South Africa at the beginning of the year, Kenya, Ghana, then Tanzania. So definitely want to just give an overview of uh, all the countries that we have on the schedule, but more so want to talk about all of the general details uh, that that many all of the tours have in common. And the foundation of those general details are on our website at africafortheafricans.org. And that's a, a website that I built in 2007 to share all of the details as far as our travels and make sure that we have this organized information. Some people feel like it's a lot, but once you click on any of the relative uh, country that you're interested in, you'll see a tour overview uh, with uh, everything that's included and what's not included in this uh, general overview. And then we have an itinerary, which is a full day-to-day -day itinerary with flight schedules and just all the ins and outs from one day to the next. That way you can just get clarity of an organized program. Another thing that we have uh, is the general terms. Uh, so that's the general terms of uh, the tour itself. And then that last... Uh, the preparation list and then some some of the tour links have language translation and some have billing your immune system and maybe one or two other articles and the ones who have visa requirements uh, those are also there so for, for anyone that's interested in traveling with us that's the main thing that i recommend that you just take your time go to the website click on a link and then read through the details and that way you just clear on everything before you commit and that way you just clear on what's going on so you can just make a, a sound decision. And beyond the website details, which is mainly the, the tour details in writing, uh, we have the YouTube page, which is my next main source of documentation. The YouTube page recommend, re basically have a list of all of the videos, especially in the last, uh, more so in the last uh, 12 to 15 years, but it showcased 20 years of our documentation of traveling to Africa. And it also lists us all of the countries that we have traveled to. I want to say the only country that I don't have videos for because the last videos that we have of that country, which is Kenya, was in 2005. And those were back in the days when I put videos on VHS. Um, and then when the technology came along, we converted those videos to DVDs. And then in the digital age, uh, what we did is just upload clips and short films on YouTube and put them on flash drive and share them in a more simpler, unique way. But nevertheless, uh, it's a collection of documentation. And when I get to the YouTube page, I'll just uh, share all information that we have on there so you can kind of navigate. So especially for those who are traveling on any of the upcoming journeys outside of Egypt, uh, you'll see previous uh, video playlists of South Africa, Ghana, and Tanzania uh, primarily. and. Once you click on the link, you're, you're seeing a playlist from the beginning of the tour, whether we're at the airport or we're here uh, in Georgia or on the way to the airport, and then everything in between, all of the tours. And the only thing that uh, we limit is it's not a whole lot of uh, nightlife footage. So sometimes people want to see nightlife footage. We do have a few, uh, but most of it is just based on roots and culture. And this literally just showing you all of the tours. So. If you are looking to travel to Tanzania, Ghana, or South Africa, you just need to get a, viv vis uh, a visual or vivid look at uh, what we did before and how the movements of the tour is. Uh, those playlists uh, will give you some full detail. Now, I'm not saying for you to literally uh, play all 100 and something videos. Uh, some people may think it's too much videos, but in this day and age of you just sharing information, uh, you know, you, you kind of cannot have enough information. And then it's hard for you to do the level of documentation documentation that you do and then just edit out so much information. That's why I don't really, I'm not particularly a fan of just using the footage that we have to just spend all my time 
removing things that people want to see. So even when I went to Egypt in April of 2004 uh, with Dr. Renoko Rashidi, which is, this is, if, that's if you can see it, uh, it's right here, inspired by Dr. Renoko Rashidi. So this is the first t-shirt that didn't say Marcus Garvey. And uh, this was like a direct uh, inspired because I went uh, with Dr. Renoko Rashidi okay. to Egypt. What's in you? Uh, what you saying, Kathleen? I'm sorry. No, I'm sorry. I was talking. I'm sorry. I didn't put you on mood. I'm sorry. Let me meet you back. It's it's all good. Uh, this is our new uh, T-shirt design uh, with the Egypt colors, uh, which uh, only color that's not in there is the white. Uh, so usually we don't use all the colors, and sometimes we do. But the goal is just to use as much of the colors of the flag to represent. But inspired by Dr. Renoko Rishidi, which is who uh, was a great historian and a great Egyptologist. And that was my first organized tour in Africa. So it literally honestly put me on the map to where when we started going to Ghana two years later, uh, you know, I thought about that experience. And it's the same thing that, you know, I've been able to bless other people with where, you know, you, you know, you share your knowledge and your experience to get other people involved in the world of not only just Bill and Pan-Africanism, but open up our minds to our global world and not saying, not just really focusing on the specific countries that we live in, like where we are in America, looking at looking at the fact that we can be an inspiration to other countries and we can work with uh, our brothers and sisters on the African continent. And a lot of times that that you know, us doing tourism journey literally just opened that energy. And that's how we got started with even doing business and investment and community development in Ghana. So our travels uh, are, always uh basically us just enjoying the fruits of our labor you know all of us are hardworking uh business people or corporate people or just hardworking people and you know it's it's great for us to just uh use some of our resources from our the fruits of our labor to just enjoy a wonderful journey and so we take this very serious because uh that's your 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 bus your tours your tour guide your your tour crew uh, your your meals and all the things that you're going to experience your transportation and so we definitely want to just make sure it's, it's special because a lot of times we have people who you know they have these uh, three four week vacation and they take vacation and hang around on you know hang around in their neighborhood uh, which is fine we're not here to knock anyone else so uh, but the goal is always to just encourage more of us to this enjoy the life that we work hard for and I've seen you know so many of my friends this uh, that had dreams and goals to do certain things but next you know they they get into their 50s and 60s and they never get a chance to do it like when I, when I have friends come here you know usually right here uh part of the presentation you have a bunch of old passports so when people ask me about those passports I was like those are all expired passport because over the last 20 years you know you have to just keep getting passport if you have a child you have to get one for your child like every five years and as far as adults every 10 years uh and then when you start sharing with them the experience of just you being in Africa and things like that, it just opened their eyes up. And, you know, you tell them, like, yes, I mean, we live in a global world. And, you know, if you, you, know, if you choose to just enjoy holidays in America, enjoy it. But uh, these are things that uh, we earn and we work for. for. And that's why some, well, most companies have, you know, vacation. And if they don't and you're an entrepreneur, you know, you, kind of like myself, you just you set your vacations throughout the year and you work towards it. So definitely want to just encourage more and more people. Um, if you just want to know more about Africa and want to just get a good feel, the YouTube channel we have and the website we have, it just opens your eyes up. And then I'm always available to talk directly uh, throughout the week. For those who are traveling with us and those who are interested in traveling with us, we have different uh, WhatsApp group where we just post information, especially whether it's conference calls or details, and just keep on building the group. And then like our Egypt uh, journey that we have, once we get closer to the journey, we do more private conference calls. We do uh, more dialogue. We share information more. And we just keep on building up because the main goal of what we do is uh, preparation, getting you ready for the journey of a lifetime. And the more prepared you are and the more organized we are and the more we have things set in the country that we have, the better your experience. So as time go along, you know, you just learn from one point to the next. So from 2004 to 2024, that's been my experience of traveling to Africa across 12, 12 different countries of uh, over 40 plus uh, journeys. And then as far as Africa for the Africans, 18 years across 35 journeys, 
25, 24 of those have been Ghana and four of those have been Tanzania. So the other countries in between have been like one or two. Like South Africa, this is our third journey going to South Africa. And so everything is honestly always based on interest. And so when people see Ghana all the time, I was always telling people that I've never had an issue just getting a Ghana group together. Uh, Ghana probably have more in common and more connections uh, with us. And you have to give them credit because they market themselves uh, to build a connection and relationship with us. And as far as Ghana, uh, Ghana has offered more citizenship to the African diaspora than every other country in Africa combined. The closest country to that is uh, Sierra Leone. And the third country, I can't even tell you what the third country is because I don't even know, uh, possibly South Africa. But nevertheless, uh, it's uh, our energy, our influence on this going to countries like Ghana and you know, paying homage to our ancestors, us getting involved in business, investment, us showing love, us creating opportunities for our, our brothers and sisters there. Those things have opened up an, a magical connection. And our goal is to keep on doing that. And as we start taking more serious connection to East Africa since 2017, um, when I went to Ethiopia, and then more so during 2020, during the COVID-19, when Tanzania was one of the few countries that was open. So once uh, the COVID-19 uh, slowed down uh, or kind of made it to where countries were open, Tanzania was one of those countries uh, that we went to in November of 2020 and then Ghana in December 2020. So, you know, once Tanzania opened, uh, Ghana is not going to just like, okay, Tanzania is open. So the only thing I, I was thinking about, I was like, uh, the, the Ghanaian government is seeing that Tanzania is opening up, so they're going to make a quick move to open up right away because one thing I, I love about Ghana is they they compete themselves on a global world of tourism to get more and more Africans in the diaspora involved into the country. And that's why the vibe and the energy in Ghana is so uniquely different. And the next uh, country where you see more of us going to now, especially since the COVID-19, is Tanzania. And Tanzania was a country where we was able to just enjoy safari, enjoy a beautiful tropical island that remind me of my home country, uh, Jamaica, not saying that Tanzania, uh, Zanzibar Island is the same as Jamaica, but uh, very beautiful similarities, especially when you go to the villas on the beach, when you have the, uh, uh, the aqua blue water and uh, uh, the beautiful clear sand, and then all of the water sports that you like doing. Uh, so, since we've been going to Tanzania, it has opened up our eyes to where the goal now is to kind of just mix a sort of paradise like Tanzania on a two, on a three or four day part of all the itinerary. So I've been able to do that with Tanzania, uh, Kenya, and then, you know, South Africa is just unique, especially when you go to uh, Cape Town. So uh, trying to add that into that way, we can have literally a balance of experience. Uh, so everything that we're doing transcend beyond just roots and culture. Like in Ghana, we have Repatriation Investment Conference. Uh, we have land presentation with our community. The other countries, um, not so much because once you start doing business in Africa, you definitely don't want to run around and do a bunch of business in different countries. So outside of Ghana, most of the countries that we have, we just, our goal is to build relationships with, spend time learning the country uh, and build and eventually just get to the point where we can do business in more countries and then connect that business energy that we have in Africa with the, uh, you know, with America, because I don't expect like a whole percentage of our population from America just to get up and go anywhere. I mean, I still look at the math, at least you still always have about 95% of our people that's still here. But the unique, unique thing about that is if we're doing business and investments in the different African countries, then we can build partnerships with our own black corporations here or just partnerships with uh, American business. So the journey that we take, it's more than just a roots and culture, having a great time, having a wonderful experience journey. It's also uh, to put a movement out to impact the connection with all of us around the world. And you know, that's, when, that's why we started really talking about Pan-Africanism and Pan-Africanism conversation is confusing in many ways because you hear a lot of people talk a certain way and then their lifestyle is different. But uh, we, you know, we walk, we breathe, we live every day uh, in a world of Pan-Africanism and supporting black owned business and building something unique for ourselves, for our family, our children, our generations. And those of us who have great, energetic, wonderful skills, we become the people who deliver the skills transfer 
to where we able to work with a young generation of uh, people in Africa to where we can create uh, more opportunities. Exa ex example is, uh, I enjoy being here on the south side here in, um, in Georgia, uh, but at the same time too, it would be more unique if I had this whole business operation along with my technical operation, just running there in Ghana where, you know, you are sharing the knowledge with a young generation and, you know, you can have more flexibility. So that's, uh, you know, the goal, you just build from the ground up and then kind of expand and expand. So appreciate all the support from those who have traveled with us, those who are interested in traveling with us. Uh, it makes a world of a difference because uh, it gives us a chance to just really just push that narrative and create that connection. And I'm telling you, family, before 2006, you look at all the people that are that are around now. And if you take time to just look back at those who are currently out, whether they're doing tourism in Africa or they're doing business and investment in Africa, uh, they weren't really around until maybe in the mid 20, um, you know, around the last uh, basically five to 10 years. I'm not saying that we have influenced all of them, but uh, we have influenced a lot of people in this uh, world as far as this connection. Now, anyone else before us is um, like the only people I, re I remember that's literally that was before myself is Asher Kwesi, uh, Kemet New uh, Production. That's literally still around. And that's why we're also looking to take this uh, Egypt journey very serious and just get a whole lot of documentation because it's now its next uh, person up. And as I was talking about with a t-shirt inspired by Renoka Rashidi, uh, I never thought uh, when I went with him that I'll be just even open to going to Egypt because I always thought it was something where, you know, it's it was mainly scholars who was really just pushing a certain narrative and it was just, yeah, I just respect what they were doing and I never just thought about just creating a schedule until my wonderful sister, Matrell, on a mission who came to uh, Ghana with me um, before the COVID-19. Sometimes I don't remember the exact years when the, uh, people travel with us because of so much uh, Ghana journeys, but uh, it was an inspiration for her uh, to where she ended up in uh, Egypt during the COVID-19 and she wasn't able to get to Ghana and then she just liked that experience better and since she'd been building our, our craft there in Egypt, she's always reached out to me and I'm always telling her, I was like, I got you, we're going to do one of these journeys. The only thing is like, I got other schedules I need to clear out the way. And finally, I got a chance to clear it out the way to where I was like, well, let's not go back to Tanzania this uh, November, 2024. Let's just open up our minds right now. It's the 20th year since I've been to Egypt and I'm still just, you know, I'm still mourning the death of my great inspiration, uh, Renoka Rashidi, uh, truly this, uh, this an incredible person that literally just took his craft serious as far as sharing the culture of black people around the world. And uh, so this gave us the opportunity now to just put that on the map and just, uh, just build from there. Uh, so as time go along and generations go along, you know, our goal is always to inspire the rest of us to do great things. And on that note, family, on, on this uh, 18th um, anniversary of our journey for a lifetime, uh, what I'm going to do is get into screen sharing mode and then share some of our documentation from our website. And before I do that, uh, what I have is an organized uh, presentation that I created. You know, you'll see it say 2006 to 2023. Uh, this is um, one of my unique creation. I'm one of those people that um, over the last 20 years, uh, I've focused on creating unique films, short films, unique presentation. And this is one of the last ones that uh, was that's incredible, along with a few that I dedicated to you know, the great Marcus Garvey for this being a great inspiration into this opening people like myself eyes to, to Africa and to just build a future in Africa. So hopefully everyone can uh, see the screen well. This is my YouTube channel and it's uh, youtube.com at Bomani2007. And the, those years usually represent the years that we started those social networks. So when you see a flyer and you see the different years, that's um, when we started. And as time go along and the new networks came on, which is just always a more of a pain because now you have to put more videos and photos up on this network, that network. And uh, all those networks are filled with uh, videos and photos. Uh, the YouTube is the mo most popular one. Uh, it's just a great craft because when you have these nice, beautiful TVs, which most people have in their homes, you can just click on your YouTube, um, you know, click on YouTube, and then you can just watch these videos on YouTube. So it's something that uh, is easier for people to share and watch, and it's just very accessible. 
and you don't need to log in or sign in or anything unless you want to make a comment and do certain things. So once you're on the uh, YouTube channel, uh, the main thing that you'll see, it will just automatically pop up is that presentation. So I'm going to open the screen up and I'm going to share that presentation. Have you ever pondered what it would be like to invest in the heart of the world, Africa? Today, we delve into the journey of a man who dared to dream, dared to venture, and dared to invest in the vast and vibrant continent. Meet Bomani Tie Himba, the driving force behind Africa for the African tours and investments. Picture this, a young boy born in Kingston, Jamaica, and raised in the bustling boroughs of New York City. Despite the concrete jungle, Bomani was always drawn to the rich heritage of his ancestors, the pulsating rhythm of Africa. His curiosity sparked a passion, a passion that would lead him to establish Africa for the African's tours and investments. Bomani's journey wasn't a straight path, nor was it an easy one. He faced numerous challenges, both personal and professional. Yet, his unwavering resolve and staunch belief in the potential of Africa saw him through. He understood that Africa was not just a destination, it was an opportunity, a chance to build, grow, and contribute to the continent's ever-evolving narrative. Africa for the Africans' tours and investments was born out of Bomani's desire to bridge the gap between Africa and the African diaspora. He wanted to create a platform that would enable people of African descent to explore their roots, understand their heritage, and most importantly, invest in their ancestral land. Through his organization, Bomani has been able to facilitate a variety of investment opportunities in Africa. From real estate to agriculture, from technology to tourism, Bomani has strived to showcase the vast potential that lies within the continent. He believes in the power of investment, not just as a means to generate wealth, but as a tool for sustainable development and economic empowerment. Bomani's work transcends the realm of business. He is a cultural ambassador, a bridge between continents, a beacon of hope for those seeking to reconnect with their roots. His tours are not just about sightseeing, they are journeys of discovery, of understanding, of connection. So what can we glean from Bomani Tayahimba's journey? First, passion is a powerful driver. It was Bomani's passion for Africa that led him to establish his organization. Second, investment is not just about money. It's about contributing to the growth and development of a community, a country, a continent. And lastly, connecting with one's roots can be a transformative experience, one that can inspire, empower, and ignite a sense of belonging. In the end, Bomani Tiahimba's story is a testament to the power of passion, perseverance, and purpose. It's a story about dreaming big, taking risks, and making a difference. It's a story that reminds us that investing in Africa is not just about financial gain. It's about cultural enrichment, economic empowerment, and sustainable development. To sum up, Bomani Taihimba's journey is a shining example of how one man's passion can create a ripple effect, impacting not just his life, but the lives of countless others. Through Africa for the Africans' tours and investments, Bomani has been able to connect people with their roots, facilitate investment opportunities, and contribute to the growth and development of Africa. All right, appreciate it, family. Appreciate uh, listening to the presentation. Uh, so this is our presentation directly on our YouTube channel. And along with that presentation, uh, once you scroll down, these are some of the, the recent uh, videos that are uploaded. Uh, with us there in uh, Casablanca, Morocco. Uh, that was a part of our Liberia journey. And so the videos, you have so much videos, uh, you can't always just publish them all right away. So you do as much as you can. And when you have multiple countries, you kind of just uh, rotate them. So once you, you scroll down, you will see uh, multiple playlists. If you want to see this, the, the video log, you can just click on video and it will show you from the recent videos to videos all the way back to 2007, which we have some of the uh, older footage. Uh, but as far as on the playlist, uh, we have uh, our last Ghana tour in July, 89 videos, Liberia, Morocco, 111 videos, South Africa, 141, and Tanzania, 90 videos. Uh, so those are 
the flow of videos and once you click on it uh you can just click on play all and it'll just literally play the whole playlist and when you go further down it's uh some more it's a more multiple playlist so literally just all of the recent journeys that we've been taking um, i've been able to put them together in playlists and just like the playlist that's on here uh we have the photo playlist on on google photos and also on facebook and then a mixture of different uh, presentation pictures on Instagram and also TikTok. And Instagram, Instagram and TikTok, um, it's kind of limited with the uh, documentation, but most of it is just primarily just uh, YouTube and Facebook. And scrolling down some more, you'll see our Black Star Repatriation and Pan-African Community video. So this is just a, a full video playlist uh, from when we just initially started uh, building our community in this uh, sharing information uh, that's from 2019 to now. And some of the multiple playlists uh, here is uh, some of those earlier journeys uh, from when we started doing the playlist in 2017. And that's uh, primarily uh, our all Ghana. And in this multiple playlist uh, shows some of the, the South Africa journey, Brazil journey, Ethiopia journey, and also my classic Egypt, Africa, 2004 Now Valley Civilization uh, uh, video. And this is uh, 12 videos and it's about six hours long. And the issue with uh, the 2004 video is we didn't have the unique technology of shooting in 4K and 8K uh, like we do now. So looking to, looking to literally just uh, redocument, Literally just looking to do some fresh documentation of that that entire experience. So I made sure that all the things that we experienced at that time that we have on the current itinerary and more. Uh, so uh, because uh, you know, I definitely want to show, and that's when you know that was uh, you know back in your your rookie days. So the documentation was okay, but as time uh, went along, we've gotten much better with documentation and creating this nice uh, films. Uh, just to share our experience, especially for those who may not be may not be able to get to the African continent. Like I have some of my families in Jamaica; they literally just appreciate the footage. They always just sharing it with each other and just you know cheering us on. Um, and eventually, you know, our goal is just to get more of our people uh, to Africa and more of our people. You know, as as flights uh, become more just uh, universal to where you know you have access to flights in different places, but. Unfortunately, those limitations have caused people who really wanted to enjoy Africa and, and made the move uh, limited. Uh, the good thing about it, uh, uh, countries like uh, Ghana, if you're from the Caribbean island or from the Caribbean community, uh, you know you can get access to going to countries like Ghana with no visas. The only issue is now is trying to find a flight there where you don't have to have a visa in America or in Europe. So those are the challenges that we still face, uh, but we still just do our best to just, um, just share the energy and just keep on building from there. Now below these uh, playlists is the Africa Tours and Investment and Conference Calls and Interviews. So virtually all the interviews that I've done over the last uh, 15 years and all of the conference calls are literally on this playlist. Uh, we, know we just really heavily believe in documentation and that's one of the truest ways we can just show people that uh, you know we're dedicated to what we're doing and we wanted to just, you know, stand out from anyone else. And then as you scroll down, more and more multiple playlists. Uh, so that's uh, the nature of the, uh, the YouTube channel once you get there. Uh, just showcasing things in more so playlists because if you click on video, this is what you'll see. You know, you, you'll see, you know, you can just scroll and as you scroll, you, and everything is in a timeline of video. So you see the Morocco uh, videos, then you see Ghana, then you go further down, you, you'll you see uh, Liberia, then you see South Africa, Tanzania. And uh, you know, once certain journeys are close, you kind of just mix it. So definitely just want everyone that's uh, traveling with us to just have access to seeing what we have done over the last uh, 18 years, 18 to 20 years. And then, you know, you can uh, share it with your family and friends and you know meet the people, uh, meet us and just, see us uh, out in our elements uh, with, in just all around Africa. And we're literally all over the play, place, you know, uh, from flights, uh, from uh, ferry boats, from driving around on buses around different parts of the country to walking around and just literally just giving you 
the fullness of our African experience, uh, which can't be uh, showcased in this any short film or any documentation or any documentary. So next, I want to switch from the YouTube channel. Uh, let me just go over to Facebook. Uh, this is our Liberia, one of our Liberia group photos, and we always have these unique Africa for the Africans T-shirt, just like the one I have on. And we just we've never created the same like color combination. It's just always something uniquely different. And this was the first version that we have ever done with the uh, Liberian color of uh, red, white, and blue. Uh, so it's distinctively different from you know every other ones that we have done because they have two colors that we usually don't have on there, which is uh, white and blue. Uh, but we always have red, black, green, and gold, or some sort of combination. And that's the pay homage to the Pan-African movement. So once you're on the uh, Facebook page, you can just click on photos, and then you can click on albums. And then you, you'll see a whole long list of uh, albums. And this is more so when we just spend a lot of time just uploading a lot of uh, photos. Now I've just reduced the amount of photos. And, and when time is a little slow, I usually just go back on and just upload more photos and build a gallery, especially if I still have a lot of nice uh, photos that I still can upload. So that's the case for South Africa, Liberia, and Ghana. Uh, but I've also added uh, some of these photos literally on Google Photos. That way, when I send you a newsletter, ex example for Tanzania, it has the links there as far as the videos and uh, the photos. And uh, this documentation takes you all the way back. Um, you see uh, young Bomani, you see him go from a toddler all the way to a 14-year-old teenager now. It's just, so he's been traveling with me since... Now, since he was two years old in 2012, uh, so uh, it's he's been getting burned off lately because I've been just taking him all over the place. But I tell him that it's a good experience and just be thankful that you have this chance to just, I know the, the, the situation with him, he wants to have more of his friends with him so they can hang out and everything. But the only chance you really get to do that is when you go to Ghana because he has friends that he have been able to just grow up with from when they were younger. And especially when we've been on the same resort, One Africa. Uh, so... He enjoy going there and just uh, hanging out with people his age. But, you know, uh, he'll get to the point where more and more people will be of his age, especially since he's getting older. And scroll down. And you now we try to just share with you all of our experience. And I, over here, I see my Ethiopia journey. Now, this was a journey that I was, um, I was recruited to, to join to do documentation and also to help market uh, Ethiopia. Unfortunately, uh, we, we've never been able to just create a, a standalone uh, Ethiopia journey because every time we create a journey, it's uh, something going on in Ethiopia where people lose interest, you know, and we always to let everyone know that wherever we take you is always the safest country and the most organized country and make sure that, uh, you know, we put you in the safest situation. So any country that's anything is going on that's not going to be safe for us in tourism, uh, we literally don't go. So the consistent countries that you see on the current schedule, those are the countries that's been very stable and also uh, have well-organized tourism you know, so we can connect to our roots and just learn more about our own brothers and sisters in African diaspora. And the other journey that's outside of our normal elements uh, would be our Brazil journey. And as much as the people that have told me that they wanted to go to Brazil, uh, every time I put the schedule up, uh, it doesn't really showcase or work out. So I changed the uh, Brazil November 2025 journey to Tanzania. And I'm happy I did because, you know, it's just a better journey, especially since uh, we, just so, we have so much experience in Tanzania. And it's just really for us to keep pushing the Africa brand. You do have other unique uh, companies that, offer lots of travels to the rest of the world, uh, which is always good so people can have options and choices. But uh, sometimes the best thing to do is to stick with what you're good at and what you have known for, which is us uh, going across Africa. So all of these 12 countries that you see, we have cut it down to where we're just working with the five unique and the best experience to give you this the ultimate journey of a lifetime. And this uh, take you just to the very, you know, the very beginning of uh, uh, me and uh, Bomani's journey uh, connecting together and this, um, this 
showing your son this how we can build entrepreneurship, how we can build something for our family, how we can just serve a great purpose of connecting our own people to an incredible experience and working with our own people to just put our energy together and just doing anything that we feel that we need to do as a people. So that is the uh, Facebook page. Uh, and along with the uh, Facebook page, what we have is a whole lot of Facebook uh, groups. Uh, so those groups are, are showcased on the uh, website. So here we are, family. This is our AfricaForTheAfricans.org website. And it's it's pictures of a combination of this old and new. Um, uh, I'm going to go back into the, the picture playlist, delete some photos, add some more of the newer ones, and then still keep the balance. But you can just play this, and you also hear some beautiful uh, cultural music. Most of it is reggae music, uh, which is a part of you know my upbringing as far as this the first energy that I heard about the word repatriation, Africa, uh, which comes from the energy of uh, Peter Tosh, uh, Bob Marley, Sizzler, Bujibantan, you know, my, you know, my four unique uh, favorite uh, reggae artists. Uh, and let us always appreciate that vibes. So we have incorporated this our energy and even our energy of uh, joining uh, Black cultural organizations here in America from UNIA, the World African Diaspora, and then just being out in the uh, Atlanta community and participating in different events. And you know, as time go along, you know, you you know, you try to do different things to build a network. And that's how I've been able to just meet so many people over the last 20 years, just being out and this uh, networking and this working with us and working with organization. And then you know my other thing is my uh, technology business, uh, which you know takes me to different people homes and connect with different people. So I'm truly a person that just believe in networking and connecting with black people so we can just look at what we have as a people and and find ways to compete whether it's in America and Africa because when we talk about Africa you know you're not just dealing with Africans uh which is our goal to connect with and do things together together with we're dealing with um Indians Chinese Lebanese people who are of the slavery just put an impact to where they just drain in the continent and our brothers and sisters, you know, are always looking for more of us to come and create opportunities. Uh, but it's uh, not as simple, but that's another way that, you know, we can compete. And I believe that we as a people should uniquely, um, and I know all of us can just come together and it's that, that simple, but find ways where we can connect together in groups and compete. And compete means, you know, stepping up our business enterprise and marking ourselves at a higher level. And just being a force to reckon with, um, you know, the foreigners uh, that come into Africa shouldn't be able to just have all the fun. But uh, if we don't compete, then they'll come and they'll just do what they need to do. Uh, so that's a situation that keeps people like myself motivated and dedicated to this, the continuous work and just building that connection. Because we have had people where, you know, you have had an incredible impact on their lives where they have went on and they're just doing unique things. And all a lot of this is just primarily in Ghana and the people that we have connected with. Uh, they have made certain moves in Tanzania, but it's a lot of work that we still have to do as a people. And I always want to let people know that tourism is the foundation. It's that introduction into the different countries. And from there, uh, some people it may be a one and done situation, which is absolutely fine. We definitely appreciate you coming through and all your contributions. Uh, it's also part of this, you know, making the African economy boom and then also giving us recognition, recognition as a people who care about their roots and culture and care about their mother continent. Uh, if we don't show up, then we can't really just talk about what's going on in Africa. Uh, so we've just made an impact to where, you know, we, we show up and, you know, we're, we're there just building the energy and from that energy, you never know where it may transcend you. So once you're on the website, uh, apart from the beautiful music that I have paused and the uh, playlist of um, pictures, uh, once you scroll down, that's when you get into the action detail of our website. And the website is just mainly built to where uh, those who are interested in certain tours, you just click on the link. And then once you click on the link, it gives you all the tour details, tour overview, general terms, uh, itinerary, language translation, preparation, visa information if, it's, um, if visa is required. And also in the middle of the, the page or the front page, once you scroll down, you see those similar links. So you can access the links from the main menu, especially if you're on your phone, or you can access, access it from the front page. And the front page also does have uh, the price. Uh, our goal is 
to be competitive as we have always been. And so part of that competitive nature is trying to just uh, let people know that our goal is to spend more of the money on the tourism part and not saying that we're just going to spend all the money in the tourism part and then don't give you great uh, hotel accommodations. So we have been outside of the Egypt where it's a few five-star hotels What we have on the rest of the journeys is three and four star hotels, which we just make sure we pick the best ones that are comfortable. But at the same time, too, that causes us to just make sure the budget is adjusted and we're still able to just spend more on the tourism part. Make sure that we get access to all the museum, all the historical and all the cultural parts of the country. Uh, and so when you do see prices on other tours, like I was looking at one for Ghana, it was like $700 more. And so the person I was communicating with, I was just explaining to her that um, we have more for less. And the only point that she brought up, uh, which I told that I absolutely respect and I have no issues with it, uh, is that if you're looking for five-star accommodations and that's the goal, then I don't have an issue with it. And I'm not here to debate with people about their comfort. Uh, but part of the situation where we had to make that decision is because Sometimes, you know, you're out all day and you're not even really in the hotels. Uh, so we don't want to just spend the majority of the budget on hotels that's four or $500. Uh, so we hopefully that everyone could bear with us. And we are more so always pushing for the four-star hotels and trying to just make sure that, you know, we have great accommodations. And that's the definition of what we have there in our South Africa journey. Uh, just beautiful uh, three and four-star hotels that's in great neighborhoods. Uh, so as time go along... Especially on this go around with the schedule I've just made, a lot of adjustments, um, especially based on when I went to Liberia. Uh, Liberia and Morocco opened my eyes up. Liberia was one of the, basically one of the, the worst countries I've ever traveled to, not trying to be disrespectful to Liberia. I, you know, I enjoy myself there in Liberia, but as far as accommodations, as far as this, uh, where, as far as when you, you go to a hotel and it's supposed to be a certain hotel, but then the maintenance is not, upkept uh, dust in the room and all those things make your travelers sick so you have to just really just be on point with that the only thing i would say is that when we did the uh, liberia journey it was kind of like a fact finding mission where you, you know you're clear with everyone that this is an experience that we just have to just you may have to rough it a little bit but it's us taking a chance uh and taking an opportunity more so more so than anything else to connect with a country uh, that our ancestors build And also just giving it a chance and putting the energy out there to where uh, I can work with other people so they can continue doing certain things in Liberia because I have my associate, uh, Kala Genesis, that's his area, Liberia, but I can't really put uh, it on a schedule like that because it's just not the flow of what we're building. Uh, and then Morocco um, was literally one of the most impressive countries I've ever seen in Africa. I mean, it was, you know, It's like what people talk about Rwanda, a clean country that's can, that's run by a dictator. And I'm always saying that um, dictatorships aren't always uh, the worst thing because in the situation of Morocco, it's the country is run by a family and they really just share the wealth as far as um, economically, as far as making sure schools are uh, on another level and make sure that education is almost free or free and uh, make sure that you know when you're driving around the country, Uh, you have professionals actually just keeping the country clean. I've never seen a country that clean in Africa. And as a matter of fact, the last time I've seen countries that clean was when I was in the Navy in uh, Singapore and Malaysia. Uh, still to this day, those are still the cleanest countries I've just ever seen where it's just still surprised me. And that was back in 1999. Uh, but the other country that we have in Africa is uh, Rwanda. But unfortunately, I wasn't able to build a Rwanda group because... You know, people say they want to go certain places, but the countries that you see are the countries that you know we get the most interest from. So as we scroll down, um, uh, the Ghana dates are passed. Um, Egypt, November 20th to December 2nd. Uh, South Africa, January 30th to February 10th, which uh, sets off our aggressive schedule for 2025. Um, Kenya Roots and Culture, April 4th to the 14th. Ghana, Roots and Culture Journey, May 24th to June 5th, and then close out uh, with Tanzania November 20th to December 1st. And from there on, the goal is to this, have the schedule flowing in May and also November. So for 2026, the goal is uh, Ghana, May 2026, 
and Egypt, November 2026. And it's been a while since we only had two journeys. The last time we had, we had a two journey schedule was uh, during 2020. But beyond that, uh, in between those years, it's been basically three to four journeys a year. So I've been literally just in, a, in and out of here in Georgia, like nonstop for three to four, every three to four months uh, to where people think, you know, you know, it's, it's something going on. I'm telling them that, you know, it's just, we still, you know, even though it's COVID-19, we still have so much interest and people still want to go. The numbers were reduced, but at the same time too, we had a chance to really just explore a different schedule. And that's how we even was able to do the, the Liberia and Morocco schedule, which made country number 11 and 12 and just two, you know, unique experience. And once you uh, scroll down past the tour links, uh, you see um, Black Star Repatriation and Pan-African Community. And that's our community goal to build the community in uh, Jahazi to where we can run our business enterprise and we can also build our homes and also have a more of an African diaspora presence and energy where we can assist and accommodate more people who want to make a, a, more, a smoother move to living and doing business in Africa and also for us to uniquely put our energy together to where we can start doing some of the things we talk about as far as competing with the likes of other people there, uh, the foreigners there that are coming into Africa and using that as the energy to, to build to where we can you know, do more business um, with, you know, with Black America and other known uh, parts of the Black world. Uh, so that is uh, something that we're going to keep on working on. And every time you travel to Ghana with us, we always have two unique things. We have the Business and Investment Conference, which is our goal is always to just provide educational information to let people know that if you're looking to live, do business in a country like Ghana, uh, you do have to just look aside of it different from tourism. Tourism in Ghana is wonderful and nice and smooth. But then when you talk about business and investment, uh, you literally you run into certain things to where you don't always have people who have your best interests. And sometimes you have people who are supposed to be working for you, but work against you based on tribalism and, you know, and then look at you as the foreigner. So it's, um, it's not the easiest thing to deal with, but it's, um, it's, it's the things that we as a people have to deal with and figure out. It's just like us dealing with racism in America. We're dealing with tribalism in, in Africa. And it kind of puts us in a situation where, you know, where we just, we're trying to figure out as a people, like, you know, where do we go from here? And so some people have taken the stance that uh, they just want to focus on America. And some people are like, you know, let's figure out how we're going to be pioneers and build a future to where we can have that connection and relationship in Africa. So that's our, you know, that's what we've been doing in Ghana for the last 18 years. And it is, uh, it's been it's been an experience and uh, we've only grown stronger with that experience to where we can uh, just offer consultation and, and just great advice to people who are coming in and let them know, hey, we're not being negative about anything. We're just literally letting you know that the, you know, the way you are used to doing business in other parts of the world or in America or Europe, this is completely different and there are almost no rules. So you have to get the best consultation uh, or best get the best consultant and the best of our people that we have in the different countries on your side to where we work together, to where we don't have to just go through certain things. Because once you start going through certain things in Africa, what I've seen most people do is they say, you know, I'm done with this. I'm heading back to America, the same place where they have sold their car, their house, uh, cash out their 401k and giving up everything. And you feel bad for someone because that's a lifetime commitment. And now you have to rebuild your life. Uh, so we just want to use uh, the energy in our platform to just educate people to, uh, you know, no matter how you feel about America, it's uh, people have been telling me that America is going to collapse like for the last 20 years and um, the dollar is going to die. And I'm not saying that it's not going to happen, but it's like, you know, we all have our family here and I've, you know, regardless of whatever is going on in America, I always want to see America thrive and, and do well because, you know, my family and the majority of my brothers and sisters may, you know, and not in a position to just go somewhere else. And some people, you know, like I have a Jamaican passport, some people have Caribbean community passports and passport from different countries. But then, you know, you have to think about your own brothers and sisters that have been here for generations, you know? So uniquely, you know, you, you want to put an energy together where we could just look out for each other and say, you know, let's, um, for those of us who just have that energy, let's just make something work in Africa and just kind of figure it out and then learn and then, each one teach one and, you know, 
we'll progress. Uh, so that's what we're doing there physically in Ghana right now. Where more of us are connecting together and we're realizing that uh, once we went to Africa, all we did was just run all over the place and we never really put our energy together to look out for each other. So when you're over here and someone else is over there, people are just getting picked off and getting taken advantage of. And this is not a communication with me uh, trying to say anything negative about Africa or trying to discourage anyone. It's uh, something that I want us to stop just going there and just offloading everything that we have worked hard for and then trust people who don't really have the credibility to be trusted uh, and make people work for what they need to work for versus uh, just giving everything that you have. And, you know, so I've had, you know, many sad stories uh, and, you know, because I've, I've basically helped a lot of people move to different parts of Africa. I know I've never physically lived or the longest I've stayed in any country is six uh, weeks is you know, the connection that we have and the relationship that we have is incredible to where you can assist people. But then once you're there, you kind of have to follow the things that we advise you on because, you know, it's not us being harsh. It's us being real because we don't want you to go through certain things. And again, that's why I love tourism, because you can just enjoy a well-organized experience in a country where everything is organized for you and then you get the best of certain things. So while you're in Ghana, uh, somewhat, you know, people are living in certain places where the internet, the water, and the power is going out. But then while you're on, us, on tour with us, you're not experiencing that. Uh, and, you know, and that's uh, the big difference. So when you actually start making moves in the country and then you just, you, you're renting a place, then you start seeing the, you know, seeing the reality of life. And I'm always telling people, if you want to live that high quality of life in Africa, you can you can get it. Just bring all your big money with you and you have well-organized communities and you have that uh, similar quality of life that you can achieve. Or you can be basically like us who are just going to build it from the ground up because we don't really want to you know, tap into the local power, the local infrastructure. We want to basically build our own to where it can serve the needs of us, of what we're used to. Uh, and that way we'll have more people comfortable to where people don't have to get up and say, no, I can't do this. I'm ready to leave. I'm ready to go back. And on the uh, main menu, uh, you'll see Black Star Pan-African Community with the star. And then when you scroll down, this is uh, one of my favorite, uh, this contribution to this documentation, which is our Africa tour books. Uh, let me just click and load. So the list of Africa tour books, the last one we did, and these are digital copies that you can just click on download here and download. And usually if you're traveling with me and you know, whatever country you travel with me, I usually send you the previous tour book. And if you come here and meet me, or if you're somebody I talk with and I was able to send you a book, uh, you, but usually we don't have enough printed books uh, and, and it, don't, it only lasts so, long, lasts so long. We do have still have some more, some of the other ones, but usually it's when we're just out doing presentations with groups. And we just give that organizer a book or two. And and then, you know, when we have uh, certain special guests that come through, which I appreciate all the wonderful people that pass through. And I'm always recommending if you're in town or you're in Georgia, uh, come by. It's a, it's a small house that's modified into a business enterprise, uh, which gives us the flexibility of not having to have an office out in town, which we're not going to be at because I'm one of the, sometimes, you know, you have a bunch of technical technical. Um, Appointments and you just you're, you're out. Whether you're doing video surveillance, um, home automation, um, uh, building somebody a technical office, or just any of the technology things that uh, we do here, uh, that's been my background from high school. When I went to Transit Tech High School in Brooklyn, New York, which I would be ever for grateful for, like forever, ever, ever. Just like my military experience, it just opened my eyes up to the world of technology and and you know created a craftsman who's now a craftsman and also a business administrator but that is my core i enjoy using these hands and all the multitude of tools from that big toolbox back there that used to fix aircraft to all the tools uh in the trunk uh that do all kind of unique uh things uh, so it's uh that continuous uh energy and that's what we want to uh, share so all the technology that you see on here is just based on me being a web designer and this uh, it technician and this uh, a person who just you know, grew up in the world of this when te technology was transitioning. And I started learning that at you know my adult age, uh, which some people now, you know, you grow into the world like my son, you just grow into this world where 
you know, he, he got up and he saw all of this technology and, you know, he has always have access to the technology. And I tell him it's not because you're being good that you have access to this is because our business invests heavily in advanced technology. So you always have the latest and the greatest in technology. And even this computer that I'm operating from is connected to another, and it's a, a TV above this monitor. And then there's a, a 65 inch TV that, you know, you use it for presentation to where uh, you can work the screens and show, you know, show the same thing or different things on each of the screens. And so it also makes your work more organized. I'm going to mute this person. Yeah. And it's just a, a way we just uh, share our craft and share, you know, you know, what we've been experiencing. So this, uh, these are the tour books as I scroll down. And the unique thing about the, the library experience was, I swear, I was just like so motivated to where I basically just uh, designed the best book that we ever, ever had and the best t-shirt and created just an incredible program. And so I'm looking to work with my, um, you know, my host that was there to just help him just take over the program because it's not something that I want to do, but it's something since we built it, we wanted to continue, especially since they want to do it. And we are open to this, you know, working with them. But you may see a library journey, but uh, I won't be on it. And I probably won't try to put it, push it too much on the site. Um, and I want to see Liberia grow. And I want to see Liberia get back to that uh, stage where it's, uh, you know, where they just, it's a future where, where the aspiration, the energy of our ancestors has uh, come to life. Uh, so we'll keep on uh, working with uh, that situation. And then scrolling down, these are some more of the other books. So we have all the countries that we're traveling to, with the exception of Kenya, there's uh, no tour book because we, uh, or there's no tour book for Egypt. So uh, when we do those uh, journeys, you know, we're doing tour books for the very first time. And the model of the tour book that I use now to edit uh, the future tours uh, is uh, literally the Liberia book. It has all of the formats that I like, and I'm just currently now this like literally just billing the Egypt tour book and I should be finished in a few days so we can send it off for printing and then uh, create the digital copies and upload it to the website and then share on our WhatsApp page. So those who are traveling with us to, to where you have a vivid, uh, vivid uh, guide itself where you have the updated itinerary and you have nice introduction information. And then you have an overview of all of the hotels and all the tour sites you're going to. And then at the end, you usually have all of our marketing and all of our documentation. And then also it has, uh, it will have the introduction of our tour host and uh, the Liberia version, uh, the two tour hosts that we had, I put all of their details in there and I try to show them as much love because my goal was to encourage them that uh, this is the end of you know me doing this program. And I want to literally just empower you guys to just literally just do what y'all love since y'all have more of the passion than I do. My passion is in Ghana. It's just, it's like, it's like my beautiful Jamaica of Africa, where, you know, regardless of whatever struggles I've been through here, it's, it's 24 journeys that have been 24 of, of some of the best journeys and experience I've ever had in my life. And that's why it's almost no year that you see where we haven't been in Ghana, but, you know, but beyond Ghana, you know, we have to just keep building that connection. So that takes us to that, um, uh, a Tanzania tour book that I've been sharing with uh, more and more people as we look into this, make that November Tanzania 2025 20, journey just very exceptional. And that's definitely one country that I feel very discomfortable in. I enjoy us just being in, you know, I, I love all of it, uh, the Arusha, Dar es Salaam, Zanzibar Island. So whenever it's time to, whether make make it a tanzania ethiopia or tanzania kenya journey i, I always like you know I've, I've, it always just put me in a bad situation because i'm like what do i reduce and i was like i can't remove zanzibar island i definitely can't remove arusha and definitely can't remove dar es salaam or you can probably remove dar es salaam and then add nairobi but then when you add nairobi then you know, you end up missing out on Mombasa, but then Mombasa is similar to Zanzibar Island. So that actually uniquely would work, uh, but we never just made that commitment. We just still went along with the standalone journey for Kenya and Tanzania. And uh, what you have seen over the years is there's no more Ghana, Togo, Benin, three, uh, which was one of the biggest journeys that we ever did uh, in November 20, uh, 2017. I, 
I honestly still can't figure out how all of that was accomplished, all of that was done, and everything was just worked out so well. Uh, but that's the dedication, you know, you create the schedule and you just, you do everything way ahead of time because if you do any of these things at the last minute, it catches up to you too fast. So I, I feel like that's what worked out on that journey. And um, it was, it was about 30 something of us that end up going on to Togo and Benin. So we just end up making it you know, optional to where a majority of the group end up doing it. Uh, so I don't feel comfortable doing that again for the one reason is the fact that you have to get a visa for Ghana and then you have to get a visa for Togo and a visa for Benin. And then with everything going up, the price of the trip would just be this too much. And it's still a lot of run around. Um, I would naturally change it to where once we get to Benin, we'll fly back from Benin to the U.S. instead of driving back to Ghana. Uh, so uh, still unique um, itineraries. And the good thing about it is once you go to these digital books, you'll see the original flow and then you'll see what we have modified from there on. Senegal and the Gambia, um, this, this is a journey that uh, no matter how much I complain about driving from Senegal and the Gambia and the Gambia back to Senegal, somehow I ended up still doing it in 2023 and then, then, then I just ended up complaining to myself again. And But the issue was we there weren't flights available to take you from You know, from Senegal to the Gambia. So when I started working on another schedule, which I ended up just removing for Senegal and the Gambia, that schedule included um, a, a domestic flight from you know, from Senegal airport to the Gambia airport. Uh, so I look forward to doing that in the future. That's uh, Those are the only two countries that I will put together because you get the best of Senegal and the best of the Gambia. You can do an incredible uh, Senegal itinerary where it's nine, 10 days, uh, but... It may take you to parts of the country where it's just not much going on. Uh, but instead of doing that, and then the Gambia is, the Gambia has a nice schedule, but uh, it's not strong enough on its own, in just my personal opinion. Um, so it was more ideal for us to do that. So all the Senegal and the Gambia journeys that we have done was uh, journeys together. And as you flow down, you know, you've seen the popular journeys, which is this uh, been Ghana and Tanzania. And for those who have never been to Senegal, this presentation is incredible. I mean, we're our hotel wasn't too far from there. And it's like when once you go up, then you have more presentation because then you have a nice tour on the inside. And then you can also take the elevator, which takes you up to the, the man's head. And then you can see uh, the child at the top. And, you know, it's... Uh, It's a uh, you know a beautiful experience. Uh, the only thing is that um, you just have to have your guide there ready because you know so he can translate from the French guide to English, unless you know you speak French. So that's always the the challenge. Uh, most of us don't have any background in speaking French, but that's what you know you have to deal with when you go to certain countries that are are French spoken. And this is our original, our first uh, journey to South Africa, as far as Africa for the Africans. I've been there twice in 2005, which uh, is why, which, you know, which was like Ju July and November. So I was able to just understand that when you go to South Africa in the summertime, it's a little chilly. But at the same time, too, it seemed like uh, you never get the same weather in Johannesburg and Cape Town. So from the 2019 journey and the uh, 2023 journey, uh, you know, The climate was completely different, but a good thing about the last journey uh, to South Africa is that when we went to Table Mountain, we we're able to do the full tour, and I really just enjoyed that. Uh, while other people were shopping, and I couldn't get them away from shopping, I was like, you know, let me just document it for everybody, and then, uh, you know, when y'all get home or get in front of your uh, screen, y'all could just see it. Uh, the experience on the mountain, the tour guide took us around the entire mountain to where you was able to see all of Cape Town. Uh, so that was a uh, That was great. And most of it was shot in 8K. And then, you know, once I started running out of space, um, I ended up just using the 4K um, camcorder. So I usually just have you know, lots of equipment because my goal is, and I learned that from Egypt, uh, just, you know, to be prepared. And and when I was there at extra batteries and I was able to, to film everything, I don't think I missed anything. So that uh, prepped me for now, especially when you go to countries that have an incredible amount of documentation. 
And, and the last uh, tour book I have on here, because I just have a selection of some of them, uh, is that uh, Ghana, Togo, Benin, Roots and Culture Tour, myself at Asin Manso, uh, one of the only ones where it's just myself in a photo. And this is just me just meditating to my ancestors and just uh, pre you know, telling them I appreciate this, the love and the connection and the energy of this, this energizing us to keep this uh, energy going. And it was the largest group that we had, which was 43. Uh, so it's uh, it was just meditating on the meditation lawn. All right, let me uh, scroll back up. So what I wanted to do, and but I don't want to take too much time because uh, all of the conference calls that we have done, we usually click on the link and go through the information for all of the tours. But uh, now that we have talked about those things, and I definitely encourage everyone to just literally click on these links and check out the uh, the tours itself. And for those who are not on the, the newsletter email list and you want to get on there, uh, you can just click on newsletter and you can add yourself. Uh, the newsletter represent all the conference calls that we send out and then all of the different programs uh, that we send out for each country, which is uh, in detail showing you previous pictures, links uh, to videos and photos, uh, social pages, and just, um, you know, it. and again, it's one of those things where some of the presentations that we have is long, but you're kind of limited when you have done so much of these journeys. You can't really just put one flyer together and it defines what you do. So you do have flyers, but then the newsletter is the ideal thing where you click on it and it's just, you know, it's something that you can also share because I believe everything that we create should be you know, a shareable item where other people can share it. So that's where you see the share button also here. Africa repatriation and consultation uh, and re relocation support. So for those who are looking to move, live or do business in Africa, um, always open to whether it's a paid consultation or free consultation. The main thing is uh, it's ideal to talk to somebody like myself and I'm gonna be real and honest and share what I can share. Uh, the last person here uh, uh, that came here, we know we talked and I was, you know, I had to be a little hard on the situation because she was literally going by herself. So I, you know, when I told her that I wasn't trying to be negative or trying to scare you or anything, is just I want you to be safe and be clear, and you know, because you're no longer you're not with a group of people and you're not with our associates. You're there by yourself and you're not in the world of tourism, so it's going to be a little rougher for you. And she literally called me while she was there a few times, and when she came back, and she told me she just appreciate this me just being real and just letting her know because she was able to prepare it, and then she's seen certain things that. She's able to work with because you know she was prepared. So anytime we're talking about Africa, the only thing I tell people is listen to what we're saying. And um, if it's one or two things sound negative, we're never gonna push a never negative narrative. We're all gonna speak highly positive about our experiences, but uh, it wouldn't be real to you if we just literally left out certain things that you may need to know. And then below the, uh, as you scroll down to the uh, main menu, uh, just have other supporting details. Like one of my favorite is this uh, link for Marcus Garvey Vision. And uh, some of those uh, speeches, I've created a presentation on the YouTube channel where it, uh, you know, where Marcus Garvey speeches are being written and then you see uh, the different books and presentation. So let me uh, click back to the main menu, uh, the homepage and I'll scroll down to to share with you the history of our tour groups. And every time you reset the page, whether you pause the music, it's going to come back on. So it's, it's as a nature of its own. So while we're scrolling down, these are just uh, details and updates, uh, links that we have. And I always uh, do my best to share the next uh, conference calls. So November 10th and December 10th and the links. And so these are our social networks, uh, YouTube, Facebook, Instagram, Twitter, LinkedIn, and TikTok. So for those who just want to know more about myself, more about what we do, um, all of our presentations are on those uh, networks. And for the most part, they're very updated. And then right here, we have the uh, Facebook group. So some of these are naturally countries that uh, we don't have on an itinerary. And we possibly may have some of them on the future on our itinerary. But these pages are still pages that we use in this post, uh, pictures, videos, and then post updates, and then this, you know, keep the social energy of Facebook uh, going. 
So here we come up to 35 group tour photos from 2006 to 2024. So this was a part of that presentation that I played at the beginning uh, as an introduction of myself and what we're doing. Uh, but as time goes on, we just keep on adding up our group photos. And I just do my best to take these group photos uh, and try to get the person who's taking the photos to just keep everything in line. Sometimes I have to do you know, damage control editing to it. But uh, usually we have one or two photos for the group that comes out real good where I feel good just placing it on the group page. So whenever we're traveling, you're going to always hear us call for group page, especially when we wear these Africa for Africans t-shirt. Uh, and for our next group uh, that's uh, going to Egypt, the t-shirt that I have on, uh, we don't have a defined dates to wear them, but uh, you know we'll be talking about that as we uh, share some more updated information on our WhatsApp. And then when we all connect together and meet, uh, we'll just find the best days for us to wear it and take some incredible I I iconic uh, you know, photos. Uh, we can always definitely do that in places like Abu Simbel, but in Egypt, you know, every place you go to is always a unique place to, to do these uh, group photos. So whether we have the t-shirts or not, you know, it goes to do more group photos. And scrolling down, uh, and I'll just do a quick scroll down since um, some of these photos were played on the presentation. The ones that you didn't see was the was Ghana and Liberia. And once we complete Egypt, I'll just add those three and then just do a fresh presentation uh, for completing year number 18. And the pictures a little the pictures look more vibrant as time go along because the t the t-shirt colors, but also the technology of the photos as we take photos more in you know high resolution and uh, you, you, as time go along, you just get better phones and better quality equipment. And so it looks a lot better. So when you're scrolling down, you'll see the time, you know, you see yourself go back into a time capsule where you know, just like my Egypt video, the quality is not on the same level as you know 20 years later and most of these recent ones are i try to make sure we just have as many of the africa for africans t-shirt and just showing you all of our design and all of the colors all of the uh, shirts are all completely uh, different And by the time you scroll down to 2026, 20, you'll, you'll stop seeing multiple journeys because back then, um, mainly what we did was just uh, one journey a year. And it took a while to just do a lot of one journeys a year before we got a chance to get to a more aggressive aggressive schedule because it takes time for you to learn uh, this business and for you to just multitask like that. Like, even when I look back at the year when we did four of these journeys, I still, it's, I still can't believe it, but that's uh, the momentum that was available to where we just made it work. And then now we're talking about just reducing down to two uh, so we can just have bigger groups and then use the time to just, you know, market more and put more information out and also just make it a lot less stressful. And so these are the two iconic uh, groups right here. This was uh, 2020 and I had no idea who was gonna travel with us or what we were gonna do. Uh, but I just, you know, most of the people here, you know, they have a good relationship with. So, you know, I just usually just call and just talk and, you know, just uh, see who's open. And then the most important thing at that time was to go over protocol because, you know, you know, with, you know, you're seeing all the deaths happening in that time and, you know, you, but you're letting people know that hey, we can do this. Uh, the country is not saying that we can't go, but we do have to follow certain health and, you know, health protocol and you know we was able to follow those things from the COVID-19 vaccination to building our immune system and uh, throughout that whole time frame uh, none of us got sick and all of us came back uh, with you know in in just as great condition as we left you know maybe one or two people that uh, you know, if you're on a plane and you breathe in that same air you, you know sometimes you have a little light flu or something And then the, our memorable years, uh, 2019 all the way to 2016, it was just literally just unique. Uh, some of the biggest uh, groups and this where we when we started just expanding, but mainly what you still saw was a lot of Ghana journeys. So we didn't really do the unique expansion until really like 2020 and Tanzania was one of the countries that set it off. But even before that, it was uh, supposed to be South Africa, 
but South Africa wouldn't open back up and it was frustrating me in um in 2020. And so the standalone option was um you know was Ghana and Tanzania. And uh once we got to Tanzania, uh, I almost forgot about South Africa and then I had to just add it back on the schedule. Uh, but uh so that's where you see, see that South Africa journey in 2023. And 2017 was that uh, foundation of the year where this I was just in and out of Africa nonstop. Um, so November 20, 2017, uh, July in Brazil, Ghana in May, and then you know, one of my favorites of all time, Ethiopia. This is us in Gondar. And I never seen castles before. I mean, you know, you just usually see the stuff in fairy tales and in European movies. And then, um, you know, you. You're in Africa, and then you know you're seeing this history of this uh, African palaces and this. You know you're seeing something that you've never seen before, and that's why I'm just literally still positive about this. Us figuring something out to to work something for Ethiopia. Ethiopia is an experience beyond just anything else. Number one thing you're looking at when you're dealing with uh, Ethiopian airline Ethiopia is that they have a unique airline that was built in the '40s, and it was built by uh, great minds of. Uh, Tuskegee Airmen brothers and sisters who literally just provided their expertise to his, his majesty government and build an airline and trained you know the train the pilots up you know, up today, which is unique because uh Ethiopian Ethiopian Airlines is just known as just having some of the best pilots in the world. If you see how the country is, where because you have about 24 airports and you can fly everywhere in the country. Uh, Addis Ababa is in the middle, and anywhere you need to go virtually from Addis Ababa, it takes you about an hour with all of the airlines that, uh, with all the airports that they have, and you know, skilled pilots that's you know navigating up, you know, you know, because you have to be able to just navigate around all the mountains in Ethiopia because there's just mountains everywhere, and also when you're in Ethiopia, you know, you do have a chance to just drive around, but most of what you're going to be doing is flying to get from one location to the next. Uh, 2016 was our foundation of where we, you know, literally had a nice big group. And then from there, you know, we expand as you see in 2017. But beyond that, uh, 2015, 2014, 2013, 2012, and then the first uh, two country journey, 2011, which uh, the July journey was because we had to just re-change our schedule from 20, uh, from October, 2020, and let's make it July 2011. Uh, if I can go back and do it again, I'll just make it one journey in 2011. But uh, it's a uh, too unique uh, experience. Uh, 2009, that was the first of our Ghana Togo Benin experience, and trust me, family, that was a unique experience. It's just, it was just, uh, you know, you just left from Ghana Togo Benin, and and then with that journey, I was able to build a better one in uh, 2017 until I was like, I can't do this no more. It's just too much to do, uh, as fun as it is. Uh, because now you're talking about this uh, three unique countries where you, uh, for those who are into this, what happened to our ancestors in the transatlantic European slave trade, you was able to get incredible documentation and presentation just along the coast of uh, West Africa. And then the foundation journey, 2006. And most of these are, let me see how much of my coworkers. Well, basically coworkers and friends uh, from uh, Delta Airlines where I used to work at and uh, friends uh, that's a part of uh, my Pan-African network. And then 2007, 2008 uh, was a great testament to my good brother, Kidi Wadu from um, LIB Radio, the Conscious Rasta. Uh, this cool brother right here in the middle and where is he at over here? Somewhere hiding in this uh, photo. Uh, but I, you know, he brought me on his radio station and we did some incredible programs and just open in Africa uh, to people. And I was just able to just, just share my experience organically. So family, I'm gonna go to the top and that is a quick overview. Some of the other things that I uh, wanted to get into was to just click on the uh, Egypt schedule and then go through things that are relevant, which is our preparation list. And I'm gonna click on a preparation list, but I'm also just gonna to stop to open things up for questions and open things up for dialogue. And then you know we kind of work on closing this out.
And so family, yeah, screen sharing is stopped and just uh, open things up so we can dialogue. Uh, went through a whole lot, even though we didn't go in define on all of the schedules that we have. Uh, but I wonder if anyone have any questions about anything I've talked about or have anything that they want to share. I like to share some information. First of all, I want to thank you for going through that in such great detail. Um, I commend you on a wonderful uh, entrepreneurship that you have created for yourself and for us to experience. Um, I am looking forward to it. I like the energy and the organization that you presented. And um, I feel the trip uh, will be a safe one because it looks like you've taken care of all the details, not only of the hotels being the best book for the best price, but the safetyness of it. You touched on that, which sometimes you don't hear with other organizations. So um, I just wanted to congratulate you. That's what I wanted to say. I'm looking forward to the trip. Well, appreciate your assistant. Right now, you're, I appreciate your energy, and that uh, means a whole lot. Uh, coming from a professional like yourself, I want to make sure I change your name from iPhone to your real name. Okay. <laughs> so go ahead, uh, give me your name. I want to make Rona. Sure all right, I figured it was Rona. I just didn't want to just, all right. Green. All right, let me just add your last name on there. Right. Yes, Rona, and also appreciate the conversation uh, yesterday. It's always good that, you know, we can have a certain conversation to be cordial and still be good as a people and just uh, be able to just uh, share information. Uh, so Absolutely. Because one of the things I want to let everyone know that uh, I, my goal is not to get into conversation where I'm going to lose your friendship or anything. So usually what we do is we don't have conversation, especially from my point of view. If anyone want to talk about things like politics and religion, you're more than welcome to. But you hear me just like you hear me usually just either somewhere in the middle or somewhere where I don't feel comfortable saying certain things because, you know, those things sometimes just turn left. And I've learned my lesson over the years. Uh, so. Just always want to share that with everyone. So you may ask me for my opinion about something and I may not want to give it so much because it end up falling into those areas where it's very just touchy. And uh, my goal is to build good relationships with everyone, accommodate everyone and not uh, look at anything that we have different, uh, just trying to connect with us and more of our similar energy. Uh, so yes, uh, Rona, you would. Oh, can I ask a question real quick about? Uh, I read the website, ninety percent detail. I still have another ten percent I'm going to look at, but um, I'm using my own trip insurance. Do you talk about trip insurance on the website? Because I do have some that I've shared the trip with as far as information, and they're going to need to get insurance, trip insurance. Uh, yes, on our preparation list uh, that uh, have up, uh, I usually have a link in there that talks about uh, travel insurance. So we usually have a link for alliances, which is one of our recommendations. But anyone uh, want to just use any kind of uh, travel insurance uh, that works for you, that's always ideal. That's one of the things we recommend. And it goes beyond just your ticket. It goes beyond just uh, when you're dealing with health and wellness. So just any situation is just something great to have and give right. you flexibility. Yeah, thank you. Absolutely. Yeah, definitely welcome. All right, family, the line is open. I just want to know if anyone have direct questions, if anything you want to talk about or want to share. Uh, well, since everyone's silent, I have another question. Will you ever consider Zimbabwe? No, Zimbabwe was one of those uh, countries. I remember just thinking about, remember when we had, it was South Africa, uh, Zimbabwe, Botswana, and what's the other country? Uh, Zambia, that's what it was. Zambia, and, uh, okay. And we end up just having to just remove all those countries and keep it South Africa. But uh, I got you. open, as long as, as long as people are open, we're open. Uh, most of the trips that you see that doesn't come to us because this lack of interest. Uh, so mm -hmm. uh, focus on, that's why I spent the last few years just creating different schedules and just getting a feel of how people feel about it. But um, I'm open to exploring more of the African continent. I've only been to 12 countries um, and um, definitely looking to
connect with some more unique uh, countries. Some well, whenever anyone shares countries, I always just put it in my mind and just think about how many times someone mentioned a certain country, and that's how we end up going to countries like Liberia, Morocco, and Mm -hmm. and end up ultimately going to Tanzania. I got you. Thank you. Absolutely. So appreciate uh, you, Rona. So family, the line is open. Uh, you can click on mute and you can just uh, ask your questions or just share anything that you want to share um, here, um, regardless of whichever country that you're traveling on. Uh, this is a conference call that we just talk about uh, all the countries that we're traveling on uh, since we don't have time to just do conference call for each individual country, uh, which would only probably put us at about two or three people on the call. Uh, so we just want to share as much information as possible and answer as much questions as possible, especially for the people who are looking to travel with us in the next few journeys. Greetings, Bamani. How are you? Hey, greetings, uh, Teresa. Always good to hear from you. How are you feeling? Uh, all is well. So, Meg, I have questions about the Kenya visa. What is the story with that? And what is the ETA um, authorization or something? You said ETA authorization. You have to be clear with that one. Electronic travel authorization, 72 hours before, they're calling it an ETA. They want a passport size photo and the single entry visa three months before. So, uh, yes, yeah, so, so they're basically saying single entry visa is uh, good for three months. Uh, last time I was uh, in Kenya on the way from Ghana, uh, you know, we had a, you know, we had a layover and we had to this. They, well, they gave us complimentary uh, visas, but uh, as far as the visa, uh, the goal is to the goal is to do the visa in the beginning of the year, and that's for Kenya and uh, Ghana. Get the visas going the beginning. So we have to do it like February, because three months before, if we do it in January, too early. Let's see February. So, so is it February we have to do the visa? So February is more ideal. Uh, so when you're doing the visa that's for three months, uh, your goal is to usually just uh, do it in like the two and a half month period. Uh, so. Uh, and so what we we can do in January is we can just go over the uh, visa details and I can create the same visa emails I usually create for other countries and uh, get that out. But the Kenya visa is uh, very flexible. Um, I like how they do visa on arrival. You get to the country and you just get your visa processed. Not saying that uh, we should wait to do visa on arrival, but it's uh, one of the more unique countries where visa on arrival is simple. Uh, oh, do you have two options. Before or after? Uh, yes, and that's uh, that's East Africa for you. That's how organized East Africa is for you because all three countries I've been to, uh, Tanzania, Kenya, and also Ethiopia, I was able to do visa and arrival in those countries. Uh, but for uh, other okay, okay, family, we're going to do the visa ahead of time um, and keep it simple. But as far okay. as Kenya, uh, that's the same thing too. Uh, two months before we travel, we can just all knock out the visa and uh, get fresh emails out and if anybody who needs help i can help them but it's one of the more simpler visa kenya is straightforward about their business they make everything this uh simple and then for those who were looking to travel to kenya and then they thought they can use their caribbean community passport they no longer accept uh your caribbean community passport with the jamaican trinidad or uh, whichever country uh, you come from so now that they're now they're requiring us to get visas in uh, kenya uh, so, ah, uh, okay. Thank you. Yes, absolutely. And as we talk about visa, uh, for uh, Tanzania, for those who have, uh, visa for, for Tanzania and Ghana, for those who have, you know, com Caribbean community passport, uh, your visa, you know, you get complimentary. You don't have to have a visa to get to the country. I just want to make sure I share that because I don't know who's from where and who have multiple passports. So that's one of the things, uh, if you have access to those passports, it will reduce the amount of visas you have to do. But the visas are not bad, uh, and they're, they're not... Only visas that's a little too much is uh, the Togo Benin visa. They want almost $200 for a visa for a country oh, wow. in a few days in. And, you know, I'm, I'm like, that's our, that's your spending money to spend in the country with the people. 
But uh, yes, uh, Teresa, uh, also doing a more organized effort to build our our Kenya group. Uh, you have you have Juma and Ronnie is coming. Um, you know, two of your favorite people that you traveled the last time uh, to Africa. With. <laughs> Give thanks. <laughs> But I was um I was looking forward to you uh, traveling with us and uh we have you know one or two uh, familiar faces coming to uh, Kenya so okay well you enjoy Egypt and give honor and praise to Brother Renoko because I went with him to Egypt so I know you had a wonderful time then and you have a beautiful time this trip so enjoy yourselves enjoy the now climb the pyramids. Have a wonderful time. Enjoy. Peace and blessings. Oh, yes, but Teresa, um, I'm happy that you said that you went with Renoko Rashidi. That's a unique figure of a person. This, uh, it's, just, it's just an incredible memory, especially when I look at old video and I see him there. Uh, but And that's why we just have to learn from our experience and just share it with as many people so they can just enjoy that experience. So we're going to, you know, we're going to duplicate some of that experience and that uh, journey and uh, just kind of build from there. Give thanks, because you know his spirit is in Egypt. Kemet. Absolutely. Kemet Absolutely. and Kush. <laughs> Let me know thanks. If, Let me know if you want one of these t-shirts. I can. Uh, you're one of the few people I can save one for, since you mentioned. Oh, uh, give thanks. Because it has it has a uh, Dr. Renoko Rashidi name on it. So. All right. Okay. Thank you. Absolutely. I you know, I I'll keep a small version for you. All right. <laughs> and I'll. I'll We'll be working out uh, whatever colors that we do for Kenya. I'm sure it's going to be nice, uh, nice and vibrant colors. Okay, sounds good. Well, y'all have a safe journey. But do you have everyone traveling? Peace and blessings to y'all. Safe journey. But Teresa, do you have any questions about the uh, the Kenya itinerary or the flow? I mean, I know it's simple. It's just. It's I know the only one was about the the visa. The visa. Yeah, but everything else is okay. All right, perfect. So family, especially for those of you who are traveling with us to Egypt and South Africa, just want to see if you have any questions, anything you want to talk about, or just anyone in general, just uh, unmute yourself, uh, look into just answer any questions. Uh, that way we don't spend more time going into a long presentation because sometimes I don't, I'm going through the presentation and I realize time has gone by and it's still so much that you want to go over and talk about. Uh, but uh, definitely at this moment, just uh, rather get some questions from those who are traveling or those who want to share their experience on traveling to some of the different countries, especially if you have traveled to Egypt and you want to share your experience. Uh, that's always ideal. And uh, I noticed there are no men on this conference call. They probably are watching football. That's what I hate about Sunday. It's, it, that's the only time we get a conference call, but it's, and some of these guys are calling me and they're like, well, you always got to have the, the conference call during the football season. I was like, that's the best time. But it's like, you can literally just um, put the football game on mute and be on a call. <laughs> yes, that's true. But I, I, I noticed that. Uh, I noticed that trend. And when they do get on and and they get off, usually it's probably because the game is starting. So I've seen all of them disappear. <laughs> yeah, tonight is definitely football. They're, I watched three games myself. Uh, but so Deidre, um, Maria, Doreen, Eugenia, just trying to find a few people to share certain things. And also for those who are traveling with us, um, which is everyone, uh, just uh, you know, share what you're looking forward to experiencing and, you know, why this journey is, uh, is you know, is your journey of a lifetime. And also see Akubi, Akubi, I know your flight don't leave soon, don't leave for a while. Uh, you're still available to talk? All right, so family, what I'm gonna do is um, do a quick screen sharing. And this is one thing that's in common to every single uh, group that's traveling. It's called the tour preparation list. Um, and so every single link that you see, you'll see a tour preparation link. And I'm just going to go through it and then uh, open things back up and then we'll close the call. Well, I didn't know time went by that like that. 
Uh, so it's 1 to 30. So uh, number one, uh, this is uh, talking about the link uh, for the uh, tour. It's basically saying that um, all of your tour information that you're looking to be clear and process uh, is on the uh, tour link. Uh, two talks about gratuities uh, and what gratuities are used for um, on the uh, journey. So what we have is $100 per person. This is just a flat uh, rate. And then we use that to share share and show love to all the people that are accommodating us uh, on these uh, journeys. Uh, number three, uh, when you come, do not uh, come to Rome. When you visit, uh, do not uh, come with a romanticized notion about uh, Africa or you'd be disappointed. Uh, just recommending everyone come with an open energy and just be open to this and join the itinerary that uh, we have organized for you uh, to where you just have a, a great journey. But also remind everyone that uh, you know, most of what we have are in five-star accommodation or five-star resort. And uh, most of what we have is this, it's... Uh, Regardless, even if it's five star, we're still in Africa, so you still have to deal with the infrastructure and the uh, terrain of Africa. And some countries uh, are a lot more organized, like uh, Egypt and Morocco. And in some countries, like uh, Liberia and the Gambia, it's kind of, you know, you got to get your, you know, you got to get get ready to rough it a little bit. Uh, but nevertheless, you no, know, it's, it's Africa, and it's just it's a unique experience. And part of us growing with Africa is just growing with certain things and encouraging the future. Uh, number four, um, there's a general conversation about tickets, uh, especially for those who are traveling with us. I've spent time to go over all of our tickets that we have. Uh, some of us have domestic tickets that take us to New York, and then every one of us have uh, group flight tickets uh, from New York to uh, Cairo and back on Royal Air Morocco. And then we also have two internal Egypt Air flights. So, uh, I've been doing my best to go through it with everyone so no one gets confused with all these flights. Uh, but the main thing is that whenever we send you flight information, we want you to log into the airlines, look at the information, make sure everything is clear and everything is good. Uh, when you have stacks of ticket information here, well, I'm the one that sent out all the details. So I usually just make sure names and date of birth, all those things are correct. And then when the tickets come back, I usually go through it and then have them fix any name issues and things like that. But at the same time, too, it's your ticket. We want you to take ownership of your ticket by just verifying everything is good, making sure the flight route looks good, and make sure that in the case of uh, you know, your international flight, you can log into the uh, the airline's uh, website and look at it. And some of us, uh, that are, a few of us are going early. Uh, your flights are on uh, your flights are on Air France. So I think I, I want to say it's about four people that's uh, going ahead of time. Uh, so make sure that uh, everything is clear. Make sure that uh, you add your seats and you know, do all the things that you need to do, especially if you're leaving a few days before the flights. If you need special meals, things like that, or if you need to uh, get the seat that you want and whether you have to pay for the seats, because in some situation uh, with some airlines like Royal Air Morocco or the international airlines uh, that you're dealing with, unless you have a certain uh, frequent flyer number, your option is to get your seat when you get to the counter or you can pay for priority seats. Whichever way that you want to do it is all up to you. Uh, once you have the confirmed booking, uh, your, seat, your seats are good. So a lot of times people travel with us on KLM and we usually I tell anyone if you have uh, Sky Miles booking and you're traveling on KLM or Air France with us, once you put in your Sky Miles uh, number, it usually give you options for complimentary seats. But if you don't have um, a Sky Miles, then, you know, you'd have to, if you want to just get seats uh, now, then you'd have to pay for you know, seats ahead of time. And it's something that people have asked me about a lot of times, and I tell them that, you know, uh, Delta Airlines is Delta Airlines. Uh, how the other airlines operate, especially in Europe, is just what they do or in uh, North Africa. Uh, so uh, based on what journey that you're going on, just be mindful of that. If you travel to South Africa, with us, it's Delta Airlines all the way. Your your as your tickets and your seats, uh, your seats are just taken care of immediately, or it give you a chance to just go there and select seats without any additional cost. The only uh, cost that you'd pay is if you're trying to upgrade it. Uh, so, uh, since you use a few different airlines, uh, but ninety percent of the times we're just using Delta and Delta Partners. It's um, uh, you know, it's it's uh, you know, it's our best uh, experience, and we just love how they do business. So. Every single journey that we have for next year, South Africa, Kenya, uh, 
Ghana and Tanzania, all on Delta Airlines, along with their partners, whether it's um, Kenya Airways, Air France, or KLM. So those are uniquely different from the countries. Uh, in South Africa, it's just all Delta Airlines. And in, in Kenya, it's uh, Delta Airlines and Kenya Airways. And in Ghana, it's uh, Ghana and KLM Air Airlines. And then in uh, Tanzania, same thing, Ghana and KLM. And usually, if we, have, if we have an option to go to France or Amsterdam, we always choose Amsterdam. Uh, number one, because of the taxes. Uh, number two, because it's just a better presentation. It's a similar airline to go to without having to speak English to people who speak French, and then they don't want to give you any help. Or it's a little, it's just a, it's just a different experience. But uh, I find just going to Amsterdam, especially when you have a long layover. Amsterdam, you could just get out there and just. go socialize in the country and it's just all good and you're able to just move around with no problem. Uh, five and six, I uh, just always want everyone just to be clear on their documentation, uh, make sure passports are good. Uh, I know it's something that's, you know, that could, some, it's something that could really catch you off guard where you're traveling somewhere and next thing you know, your passport is going to be expired. So always make sure that you have six months on the date of travel uh, before you just And if you need to just get a new passport at a time, get it ahead of time. But in this case, I uh, just want everyone to just have all their documentation printed, organized, and then put it put it in your you know your bag where you, where you put your 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 passport, your visas, your tickets, and things like that. Uh, seven, um, def definitely recommend everyone to just get to the airport ahead of time and just make it less stressful on yourself, uh, especially when you don't have to just make it stressful and just. check in and then just give yourself time to relax. Go get yourself something to eat and then uh, wait for the other group members to come so you can socialize. Uh, eight, uh, talk about uh, check bags. So for the most part, what we have uh, for all international flights is two check bags at 50 pounds. Now, when you have an international flight uh, like Egypt and uh, Tanzania, and it also has uh, domestic flights, When you get on that domestic flight, you may have to pay for the second bag. Uh, it's not always something that we can just work out with the domestic uh, carrier. So just always want everyone to just be mindful of that. And naturally, if you just take one check bag in general, um, you know, you don't have to worry about that. But uh, you're looking at about $50 for the additional bag on the uh, domestic flight. Uh, nine, and for the most part, uh, all of the airlines is two uh, carry-on bags. Now, when you're on the smaller aircraft, sometimes they just allow you one bag uh, as far as a carry-on, and then the other carry-on that you usually have, they just give, you know, just tag it for you for free, and then you pick it up when you get off the flight. Uh, Ten, always recommend uh, when packing luggage, remember that less is better, and you want to purchase more things as you go along in the country. So, example, if you bring two bags, and one of the bags is full with school supplies or clothes or basically things that... You want to donate, give, or barter in the country. Now that clears out one 50-pound bag. And then now when you do all your shopping, since uh, all across the different itineraries that we have, you know, you go into all these unique places where, you know, we encourage you to shop. And, you know, we even have a shopping contest. So see who's going who's gonna to spend more, more money in the country. And then we just always give them a nice praise and celebration. And we just make it nice and eventful because we usually have some go-getters that, You know, they burn everybody else out by just their drive of shopping, and I'm just always impressed. But uh, it's great for the economy of the different countries that we go to, and the vendors love it. You know, they, they, they appreciate us just having appreciation for the arts and culture of their country and taking it back home. And I want to say I have a mix of a few things here, not as much as I would like to have, but, you know, when we, you know, when we get the... The, the the big the the big house there in uh in Ghana and our business center you know we'll decorate more and put more things up. Uh, eleven, uh, bring a set of uh, whites and also a set of uh, red black and green red black green and gold. So in this case of uh, Egypt, our T-shirt is already already that color, and if you bring a set of white, because uh, we usually just use those colors and those energies just to you know. to wear and have a nice uh, you know, cultural connection. Uh, so we just usually just define one or two days where we can just wear the colors and just uh, label them as this ancestral days or days that we just pay homage to our ancestors.
So you'll see photos that, you know, with us in all white and then photos with us all in red, black, green, and gold combination. And uh, 12, uh, as I mentioned about the, uh, you just literally just having more space in your bag. Uh, our goal is always to collect uh, school supplies or have school supplies and financial donation for one or two schools in the country. Just trying to show love to our young generation of children that uh, we just want to let know that uh, you know we're coming and we're enjoying a journey for a lifetime, but we also want to take a break to just show some love and show some encouragement. And then you, here down here, you'll see black uh, doll babies because the majority of the country we go to, that's who you are having the schools as uh, black children. And you know, I always want uh, children to just see things that resemble them. And one of the issues is the psychology of just so many white dolls being dished out to black children. And, and you know, this, it, I think it's personal psychological situation, but instead of just complaining about it, you know, we decide just to, collect uh, black doll babies and just share them and just click and then we don't ever leave the boys out so try to make sure that we have some toys in there and things like that and you know it's all from the you know from you know from our heart and then if you just want to do any kind of donation uh, to the school you can just do that donation there directly at 13 um a meet and greet so in this case uh we usually have a meet and greet before the departure flight two hours and uh, it's a good way for us to introduce and connect everyone. And even before that, we do introductions on our WhatsApp page where we post our group, post a photo of ourselves, and then type in a nice introduction. And that's a way for us to see how each other look. And that way, when you get to the airport and you start moving around and getting to the gate, you can start recognizing each other because uh, we don't always have everyone put themselves on video call and, you know, and show, show themselves. But most of us have profile photos uh, on the uh, group call and also just always recommend that everyone that's on whatsapp if you can just upload a, you know, upload a photo of yourself and if you have certain reasons why you know you don't want to do that definitely understand uh, it, it is whatsapp and you know, and maybe you don't want to share certain things but in our group energy uh, when you're on whatsapp and we're communicating and posting information you're able to see you know, a profile photo of everyone that's traveling with us uh, so Definitely recommend uh, everyone take their time to do those things uh, in the WhatsApp page as we try to build more of a vibrant page where information flows and it's a source of us getting to know each other and building up uh, for the journey. Uh, 14, bring any necessary medicine that uh, you might need. Uh, 15, camera camcorders, uh, bring extra film or memory card and rechargeable batteries. If you have electronics, bring a converter, a foreign adapter, and an extension cord. And for those who want to use the local SIM, just bring an unlock phone, and then you can use the local SIM. Most of us are not in the country that long, so what you can do is you can purchase the international plan from your phone carrier. Uh, that way you can just uh, use your phone like how you use it here in America. It's still not going to be as effective because you're using international signals, but at least you'll be able to get your phone calls, your text messages, and then you also be able to use WhatsApp without having to connect to someone else Wi-Fi. Uh, so those are some of the ways to keep your communication going. Uh, 16, uh, travel iron, alarm clock, plastic bags, compact umbrella, waterproof poncho, and other convenient accessories. Uh, 17, mosquito spray or repellent or, or centronella oil, which is an excellent uh, insect repellent. And avoid wearing scented lotion or oil or oils. Mosquitoes like sweet uh, scents. You know, I know some time people are gonna say, well, you know, because some of us, you know, we have different uh, skins that affect certain things. So just let everyone know that's to be prepared. But at the same time, too, you are spraying chemicals on your body, so be mindful of what you use. Eighteen uh, calculator. Um, most of us are phone. Well, all phones have calculator, but the calculator for basic uh, things like currency exchange. In this case of Egypt, uh, it's $1 to 50 Egyptian pounds. And always recommend everyone that's traveling with us bring bigger bills. It's less money to carry by using 50s and 100s. And in some cases, in some countries, especially Ghana and Tanzania, if you give them 50 and $100 bills, they'll give you the maximum exchange rate. If you give them 10s and 20, they'll give you the worst exchange rate. Uh, but that's the system that I just wanna share with everyone. And 19, um, 
make sure that you know you are prepared uh, just bring cash and also uh, your debit cards and other cards work in the country uh, so just create an option of flexibility for yourself and anyone ever that needs to use AT machines uh, we usually just have direct access uh, for it because you never know you know you go to a country and you have a budget to spend and next thing you know uh, you know you can't stop but just uh, like in the vendor's presentation and you just want more to collect so uh, it's you know it's preparation options to just be prepared because one of the things that I uh, always see just wherever we go it's just tons of things that you just want I mean you do have to be mindful because you know you get to the overspending now so definitely make sure you budget and also Uh, don't wait for any specific time of the journey to get anything. You can just get things along the way from one part of the journey to the next. And then worst case scenario at the end, um, you know, you always have the gift shops at the airport where you can get one or two things if you, especially, you know, certain basic souvenirs that you may not, may not uh, get um, this through the journey, but, you know, you have certain things, you know, the cost will be naturally a little higher, but, you know, it still give you options. Uh, 20, um, Most of these are countries uh, that we travel to. The weather is usually in the 80s. Uh, so it's like tropical niceness. So you definitely want to make sure that uh, you are prepared for all types of clothing. Um, most of the journeys, you know, you're going to have access to nice pools or have access to the ocean. So uh, swimwear and then we have you know, nice social dinners. So you can your, your casual slash African clothing. And in the daytime, just be as comfortable as possible. Um, and just um, and if we're doing any kind of hiking or any hard terrain, just make sure you have comfortable uh, footwear. Uh, 21, just want to be, everyone to be mindful of this. Uh, kind of just watch what you're doing as far as taking photos and videos in the airports and, and other places, and especially myself, you know, sometimes I just get this in a zone and next, you know, I'm at the airport just recording and just in a zone and uh, next, you know, somebody's tapping you on the shoulder. Yeah, so... Uh, but uh, nevertheless, uh, just you know, let's uh, just make sure, especially with the government buildings, and let's. Uh, I don't think it's that much of a big deal, but at the same time, to uh, our tour guide would also just explain these things to us also. So I'm just getting us prepared, and if you see certain things coming up, um, we usually tell the tour guides if there are certain buildings or certain places coming up, let us know up front so we can just lower down our equipment. That way, no guards or you know, or military or just uh, law enforcement person see us doing a bunch of filming and then next, you know, they feel it as a way for us to stop us and shake us down for some tips because naturally what we're going to do is tip them so they can leave us alone so we can move forward because, you know, we're trying to enjoy our program. Uh, 22, Africa Tour does not offer travel insurance, but it can be purchased from an independent insurer. Alliance Travel Insurance is one of the companies that have locations in different parts of the U.S. that offers traveling, traveling health uh, services. Uh, and many of our group members have used uh, the services. So you can just use that link as an option, especially if you just want to get a quote and get an idea. Uh, 23, toiletries including uh, tissue, soap, napkins, wet wipes, facial tissues, washcloth, beach towels, and laundry soap. So these are some of the other convenient accessories that we have. And all these things, not saying that everyone should just get all these things, but uh, you can use this as a part of your checkoff list of things that you may feel like you need to bring. Uh, 24, uh, and I'll just even change this from Egyptians to this um, Africans or this since we're traveling to Africa and not trying to isolate uh, people. But uh, so what we have is uh, Africans are very friendly. However, be wary of who just, be wary of people who just want to make quick money off you and make promises they cannot keep. Uh, you should know as much as possible about the people who you're planning on doing business with. So since we're doing tourism, uh, there's no need for any of us to really make any kind of hardcore commitments to do anything in the country. Uh, that's something that uh, we need to review, especially with our tour guide and people who uh, hosted us that have our best interests and know the country more. It's the best to run all those things by them. Uh, and that would save a lot of people from making certain mistakes that unfortunately we have seen made where you feel bad because you meet somebody out in public and they're telling you they're prince and they're telling you their father's the king and they're telling you all kinds of things which I I usually don't have time to even entertain in conversation because I'm just trying to have a good social time and I'm not here for royalty and meeting royal people and I mean I'm here to connect with the people and just enjoy my time there in the country.
At 25, games for leisure, including social gathering, deck of cards, dominoes, chess, and general board games. So when we're cruising down on the now, you know, you, you're going to see me out there by the pool area, and I'm going to have the cards and the dominoes. I'm going to just ask who won it, who, who's ready to, to do it. So whenever we have these uh, social times on, like, resorts and places like that where we're not going to go anywhere far, uh, that's usually the best time for us to socialize. And let's have a you know, fun social moment. And uh, my son is, uh, is, at one point he was, uh, well, it seemed like my son and my younger brother and sister, they're like the chess master. So whenever they travel, they're always open to playing chess. For those who are into chess, uh, it's a great strategic game. And uh, 26, emergency items, uh, flashlights, uh, basic first aid kits, a laxative, Pepto-Bismol, um, and just a long list of things. Uh, 27, um, my most important message to everyone, uh, please focus on enjoying yourself and accomplishing your message, your mission. Uh, do not get distracted by others or get caught up into complaining. This is an experience that will have its ups and downs. It's a part of your introduction to Africa. We recommend you just go with the flow and enjoy your time in paradise around the wonderful itinerary that we have put together on the journey of a lifetime. And when I mean ups and downs, let me give you this a great example. All of that itineraries, one, one thing you've seen in common is you're flying all over the place, you're driving and you're moving. So that, it, it wears you out. Uh, you know, we're, we're people and no matter how strong you are, you get wear out from, from moving, but that's still the best way for us to enjoy it. That's why we try to make sure that we have direct internal flights and just kind of work out certain routes to where it's just less stress. But in order to just really see countries you just, you know, you have to just, you know, make it, uh, you know, make it work on those, uh, those flights. And I know sometimes people ask me about the flights internally. I was like, it's all of them are smaller planes. Um, and some may be as big as a 737, but for the most of us, some of them are smaller planes from that size to smaller. Uh, uh, but also at the same time too, you know, it's, they're not going to have a big triple seven or seven, eight, seven, uh, on a one hour, you know, one hour flight from one location to the next. And then you're going to some, for the most part, uh, smaller airports. And uh, along that note, as far as uh, this, this focus on enjoying yourself, you know, uh, your your goal is to enjoy the fruits of your labor. We work hard for our, you know, for our money, and you know, you're enjoying your accommodations uh, that uh, you're paid for, and then, uh, and then also this, your your hostess assisting you. So just uh, enjoying and ultimately. Anyone have any questions, uh, any issues, any any situation, uh, you can always share it with us. Um, uh, you can always reach out to myself directly or the tour guide. Uh, we're, we're working in partnership to no matter what the situation is for you, we want to make sure that we can resolve it, make sure you're good to go. Um, now, whether it's an issue with the, the room or whether it's just anything that you have or whether you're just not feeling well and you may need to see a doctor or you may just need someone to check you out or if you're just worn out from walking or just whatever the situation is, just please communicate with us. Uh, that's what we're there for. We're here to accommodate you, make sure that you enjoy your journey and make sure that you get back home safe with your family so you can share the great experience. Uh, 28, uh, this, I'm, I'm still like caught up into COVID-19 world, but uh, as far as this, anything that you need to bring, uh, whether it's yellow fever or any kind of vaccination, just uh, bring it with you in general. I just usually keep everything that I have in this uh, one bag. So no matter what country I decide to just go to, uh, all those things are in there, even COVID-19 card and yellow fever card. Um, and, you know, since I've traveled, uh, my son, I've learned to just keep both of our birth certificate with us, you know, because people get crazy at airports. Uh, sometimes they pull you to the side and ask you crazy questions like, is this your challenge? And things like that, which I respect to the, for the most part because people are trafficking children and they're doing certain things. So if they see certain things, you know, you want to respectfully just, you know, just you know, commend them for doing their job and not take it personal and say, you know, this is my documentation and so on. And I've had to trust me do that a few times. Uh, or, they, or usually the question is, uh, where's the mother? Uh, all right, uh, 29. Uh, when you get to baggage claim, uh, there's always one everyone to just make sure you get all your bags together and for us to stay in the same location. That way we can all verify that we all have our bags. And if one of two of us don't have our bags, unfortunately, family, it's, uh, you know, 
fortunately, it's just not the end of the world. Uh, these things do happen. Uh, so what we do is just make sure that we work out all the details where the bags can be dropped off. And I've been I've been in that situation once or twice. Um, and it's you know it's not nice, but um, when you're when you you know when you're deciding to travel during busy times of the year, that end up working out. So that's why I've also just removed some of the busier times of the year where it's just too much going on. Like July, it was just too much, and then last December, in South Africa, it was just too much. It was just too much busyness. Um, and then even a year before that in Ghana, they just Kalem and other airlines. They the the airport was just filled with bags everywhere because uh, of uh, whatever whatever icy situation that happened in New York it trickled down to this to where some people didn't get their bags for two days or so so I tend to just start just using more of the schedules that are very light to where uh, not much is going on and you're not going to really have a baggage issue so the December schedule and the July summer schedule which have caused the most issue in any kind of delay or anything. I'm not saying it's caused a lot, but uh, we don't want we want everyone to get everything that they need when they check their uh, bags and everything, and um, you know so. But uh, I've seen it to where when those things happen, um, you know, we just uh, work it out and it get delivered uh, the next day. Uh, so on that note, what I advise everyone to do is don't put everything that you have that you own and that you travel with in your check bags, and. Um, Fortunately, when those things happened to me, I was prepared because on my carry on, I did have a few days of uh, clothing and you know that did work out, uh, even though you want to have access to the rest of your stuff. But uh, in case that happened and you have a one day delay, then it's not that bad. And usually wherever we're going, uh, you know, we're usually there for a few days anyway. Or if we're somewhere and we have to go somewhere else, the flight situation work out to where they can deliver the bags to that next city. So all of these things, you know, we just think about and process and just want to make sure we're clear. And ultimately, if anyone ever needs to talk to me, uh, you can always call me, uh, reach out to me. And uh, as you see, my number, email address, website is always on every documentation. And 30, uh, in respect to our ancestors and also, uh, you, know, you know, well, definitely ancestors, uh, you know, near ancestors or far ancestors or just loved ones uh, if you want to bring anything special to any you know, any tomb any pyramid or any holocaust dungeons or anywhere you can just always just use that as a time to just reflect with your ancestors and just you know do something private for yourself by if you want to take a picture some people have ashes ashes that they that you know one of their Family members were never able to make it to Africa, and the, the the goal of that family member was for the ashes to be poured in the ocean or you know things like that. I've, I've people have shared many wonderful things with me, so I'll just use that as a note to just remind everyone on that. So, family, on that note, let me stop uh, screen sharing and then uh, work to where we can just uh, close out. So, the line is open for those who. Are, uh, have uh, questions or those who like to share anything and uh, beyond that uh, we're going to close out definitely appreciate everyone just taking time out the busy uh, Sunday and the busy football schedule to join us and uh, share preparation and just uh, get us in good energy for all our next journeys coming up and then definitely want to make sure that we go through as much as this as possible because as the holiday kick in that's the less I want to bother anyone, but anyone can always reach out to me because uh, we work here throughout the holiday. I will be here during Christmas and New Year's, more than likely uh, working and just um, doing business as normal. Uh, so we're always available. So family, anyone wants to share anything before we close out for the night? All right, on that note, family, everyone needs... Uh, go ahead, I'll see Deidre, I see your line is open. Oh, yeah, I was uh, I was just going to say thank you for the uh, presentation and all of the information. Um, I got I got a little sleepy, but it's uh, it was great information. So thank you again. Absolutely. I appreciate you joining and. Um, and it's a lot of repetitive information that we share, but that's sometimes the best way for us to deliver our message. Just keep on going over things. And ultimately, by the time you get to the country, you're prepared, you're clear, and you're ready. All 
All right, so family, uh, and for anybody who needs to communicate with me, uh, you can just text me or reach out to me. I'll be available even up until now. I'm going to be finishing up some of our uh, working on our next uh, tour book and just adding the final stage to it so I could be ready for print on Thursday. And, and as you can see, the T-shirt's already here. So uh, we're going to be start packing and getting things organized. Uh, so regardless, uh, we'll be on standby. And my goal is to just keep posting in the WhatsApp page and post updates. So on that note, family, uh, once again, appreciate everyone joining us. Uh, you take care. Enjoy the rest of your Sunday. And the journey continues. I'm going to just unmute everyone. All right, so family, take care and uh, closing the conference call.